Hi, it's me Jazzy. I'm back with another tech related video and today it's been a while but I'm pleased to say that finally I've had some time to get our advanced E1 signal generator back on the bench. Yes, it's been a while. You may remember last time I replaced the mains cable and we had some problems with some of the capacitors. So let's get it on the bench and have a catch up with where we've got to with the advanced E1. It's great to see the E1 back on the bench. It's been a busy couple of months, so I haven't had time to dig into my projects. So I've been looking forward to getting my teeth into this one. So we had a problem with the two Hunt capacitors that were in here. So as you'll see, I have already replaced those two, these two brand new capacitors. Now on powering this up for the first time, we have one capacitor here which is started weeping at the top. So that's gonna be next to get replaced, oozing and it's not looking good at all. So you can see these two new caps that I've put in and the resistor, which I've tested, seems absolutely fine. So I've popped that back in. I haven't used mounting brackets on these new ones as they're much more lightweight than the original Hunts ones were. So here's our replacement for the oozing one. Good old RS, 0.047 microfarads, 400 volts, should do the job nicely. So first thing to do is desolder this failed capacitor. Let's get rid of this out of the way. I was having trouble getting my nut runner in on this one because there wasn't much space. As usual, I've sped up the boring bits, mount off of that one, and you can see that's in really yucky condition. That is absolutely no good at all. So let's solder the nice new one in place. Much smaller than the old one. So I'm just going to solder that in and clip the ends off. There we go. So you can see the two that I've already replaced and the new one that I've just put in. Now a quick check of my voltages and all seems to be good. Everything's behaving as it should do. Perfect. So the next job is to replace the connectors on the front, which are a bit tired, a bit rusty, and I would much prefer to have BNCs on it. So I know it might affect the originality, but this unit's already been modified to some extent. So I am going to replace all the connectors with BNCs, which are the 75 ohm jobs. Now I've retained the original mounting screws and nuts. Partly because it fills the holes on the front panels and partly because some of them do serve a purpose of anchoring earth points to the chassis. So we're going to check everything is earthed as it should be. Here you can see I've replaced this one, this one and I've got to replace that one. But the next one is under this shielded metal box here and this is the attenuated RF socket under here. So let's get the top off the cover. Just a couple of nuts to remove the cover the cover lifts out. I've already desoldered that wire from that front panel connector as that's going to get replaced in a moment anyway. Let's have a look what we've got under here. So you can see here we've got the multiplier pot and you can see the black wire going to the attenuated RF socket on the front of the case. So to remove the socket we've got to take the nuts of these very very long bolts which go all the way through and secure the top of the metal cover. So just using a flat headed screwdriver on the front of the case to undo that one. It is super long. There we go, that's the old one. You can see it looks rather worn. I mean it's been in there for 75 years so I'm not surprised. I'm going to replace that with a shiny new BNC make it easier for me to hook this up. I'm going to be using this signal generator as part of my bench kit so I want it to be functional as well as looking good. So we just get everything screwed back in, make sure it's done up nice and tight, check the earth is okay and then we're just going to solder that wire back on the top and now the metal cover can go back on and do up nuts. Fantastic, one more to go. Now little did I know when I replaced this last socket with a BNC that I wouldn't actually be using it. As you'll see further down the line, I've decided this one is strictly ornamental. I figure it's a lot better than just having a hole in my front panel. So there we go, that's all the front panel connectors replaced with BNCs. Put a little blob of solder on those earth tags just to make sure we've got a solid connection. 
And there we go. I think it looks great with the BNCs on the front. I don't think they look too out of place at all. It'll certainly make life a lot easier when I'm hooking things up to it. Now, before we power on for final checks, I'm just going to have a look inside this cover to make sure there's no obvious problems. You can see the other valve there under that red cover. No obvious problems in here. All looking good. You can see the tuning pots and the wavelength selector all looking good so got it plugged in valves glowing nicely and a quick check on the oscilloscope and it shows us we have no 400 hertz af signal and only a pretty weedy rf signal out and definitely no modulation something is not right so after a bit of further investigation and fault tracing i've decided that i'm going to remove this unusual concoction of old capacitors most of which seem to have failed anyway so i'm going to remove this i don't feel i need any extra functionality i mean this is a great unit this e1 it's a precision instrument so i don't feel the need for this extra add-on so i'm going to return it back to the original spec Fortunately, we've got the schematic for this model. It's readily available and it's quite simple to return it back to its original specification. I'm leaving the extra knob and BNC socket on the front of the panel purely because I think it looks fine and it means I don't have to find any blanking plates or put up with holes in the front panel. They're just purely decorative now. So even after removing this concoction of rather ancient looking capacitors, I still had a problem, no AF signal. So it turns out that whoever did this rather unusual modification had also moved some of the wiring. So there was a missing earth lead going to the oscillating transformer. And there was two lots of windings in the oscillating transformer, one with three terminals, one with two, but they weren't set out as per the circuit diagram. In reality, it was a little bit different with the pair being in the middle and the three terminals having one on the left, two on the right. With a little bit of troubleshooting with the multimeter, just literally working out the impedance between the terminals, I was able to figure out which two were the pair and which three went together. Once I figured that out, then I was able to connect up the earth in the right place and connect the lead that carries the AF signal to the correct place. Okay, so now hooked up to the AF. So there's five volts, 400 cycles, 400 megahertz. And if we look at the counter, yeah, that's not, actually not bad. Okay, so we go in the attenuated RF and you can see on the scope, yep, modulated, modulation off, turn the modulation on, and adjust the voltage, see the signal changing, perfect, adjust the multiplier. There you go, and we can go full RF, which is, wow, there we go, there we go, full RF, of course, not attenuated, so you're getting the full lot, there we go, modulation on and off, that's that, there we go, she's working. Okay, so we've got our temporary aerial in there, um, we've got our radio which I've tuned to 600 kilohertz medium wave. So we want to be going for 600 here. There we go. Perfect. Look at that. Spot on 600. There we go. There we go, she's working. Look at that, fantastic. So now we have a fully working advanced E1 signal generator. Fantastic, and what a bit of kit this is. I'd say for a bit of kit that's clocking on for 75 years old, 
it's doing pretty well. Purists may disagree, but I think it looks quite smart with the BNC connectors on the front. I don't think they look too out of place at all. And it certainly adds to its usability. And I'm certainly going to be making use of this signal generator. Now, although I've removed the mod now that one of its previous owners had unsuccessfully installed, I have left the knob and the extra BNC connector on there just because yeah, I think it fills up the front panel quite nicely and I don't want to go to the effort of having to repair any holes left in the panel by removing them. So they're just purely ornamental. So I hope you've enjoyed taking a look at this 1949 Advance E1 signal generator with me. It's doing pretty well for 75 years old and still working. So thanks for watching. As always, massive thanks to everyone for watching, sharing, liking, commenting, and subscribing. It's always massively appreciated. I'll be back soon with some more tech-related videos, but in the meantime, take care, and I'll see you on the next one.